Children are back in class, and besides learning, safety is always a consideration. School resource officers, some of the most visible parts of school security, keeping kids safe and reassuring their parents. At the very beginning of the year, I get into as many classrooms as I can, and I let them know who I am and what my job is in the building, and I explain to them, like, my job is not here to arrest you, and I'm not here to babysit you, I'm here to help you, I'm here to uh, provide for your safety. And school resource officers have a long list of duties. The preparation starts before kids walk through the halls. Officer Jamie Brown, you saw there, says she's a friendly face that's ready to protect and serve the students of La Vista Middle School. And joining us now is Lieutenant Charles Ott. He oversees Omaha Police Department's school resource officers. Lieutenant, thanks very much for being here today. First off, tell us, what, what is the job of an SRO? There's a lot of jobs that come <laughs> with being a school resource officer. Uh, we like them to work very closely and have a good working relationship with their school administrators. We really want them to be, you know, work hand in hand with them, uh, you know, on all sorts of issues. Uh, we also want them, you know, the big reason that officers are in the schools, just like Officer Brown said, it's not to arrest kids. Right. Uh, there's a lot of critics out there who like to, you know, claim that's what we're in there for. That we are trying to prevent kids from getting into the court system. We're trying to make a positive influence, build good relationships with those kids, because there's many instances, you know, when you start talking about potential school violence, uh, there's instances, you know, studies have shown that a good relationship between an SRO and uh, the students can help avert those, uh, mm -hmm. those uh, potential acts of uh, violence that are coming. Um, and obviously, safety is an issue. Right. Uh, you know, we had training last, uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, all the SROs with a group in, in town here, Concord Mediation, that uh, handles the uh, mediation when kids get... Uh, get assigned to that from sure. the court system. And uh, we went around and they asked all the officers and just about every single one of them said, school safety is, uh, that's their number one priority. Mm -hmm. And uh, we actually were lucky enough this year, uh, we have an SRO that went down to Uvalde, Texas, right after the incident occurred uh, as part of a peer support uh, program. Huh. Uh, he couldn't, you know, couldn't get into specifics in regards to that role, but, uh, we had a meeting after he returned and kind of went over the things that he learned uh, from that experience mm -hmm. and talking to them. And we are using that information uh, to help us with how we're going to do our jobs as far as school safety and inspect, uh, checking out the schools, things like that. You, know, you mentioned Uvalde. We did a report a few years ago about SROs uh, getting training for how to handle mass casualty situations like happen what happened down there. We have some video of that. Uh, unfortunately, we have seen more of those situations uh, since then. What do you tell SROs about what to possibly expect? You know, in a, that something that may, may happen like that. Well, in these trainings that we have, the, the one thing, no matter how hard we try, we cannot replicate the sure chaos that it's going to be. Uh, sure. it's, it's, you just can't do it. Um, so we want to get them, you know, repetitions. We want to get them in the right mind frame. This is how you're going to react. This is what you need to do. This is what we expect you to do in certain situations. And so repetition and training is the key uh, because you can't react to a stressful situation like that and do it properly if you haven't you know, experienced some training that will help you with that. You know, and today, we're, this morning, we were talking about uh, mental health. Um, so if, if a child is going through this, the hallway and they see an officer standing there, uh, they may feel a little intimidated, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they may say, oh my gosh, the, the, why is the police here? You talked a little bit about building that relationship. How important is that relationship and, and to, to ease those children? Uh, it's huge. Uh, I can name numerous instances of uh, situations that could have, you know, could have been much worse than they were, but because we have SROs in the school who take it seriously, if you talk to these SROs, they will tell you, you'll hear them say, my kids. That's how they refer to their you know, students at the school. And we've had instances that could have gone bad had it been, say, somewhere else, but because the SRO was there, they had a relationship, they understood the kid, the kid respected them, they've worked out much better because of that relationship. And we've done a lot with, uh, done a lot 
throughout history, I should say, with uh, helping break down those barriers and getting kids to understand, you know, hey, we're people too, and we're here for you, and we're here to help you out and make a positive impact in your life. What do you, what do you tell SROs as far as how to handle a, a child who's coming to you in a stressful situation? And you don't know what it is, but you can tell the child, as we heard Joe say at the beginning, there's more anxiety out there. Mm -hmm. And so maybe you have a child coming to you, obviously in some kind of crisis situation. What is the SRO supposed to do? What do you tell them to do? Well, the one thing we've done with our uh, training to become an SRO, most of them, uh, I think just about every single one of our SROs have been through teen brain training. That's at least two days training. Just about all of them have been through uh, crisis intervention training, which is a week long training. Uh, it's really man it's really training I want every single one of them to have before they even become uh, SROs come into the unit. Uh, so they are hand, they are trained uh, to handle dealing with those kids in crisis at the time. And a lot of time it's just letting them, you know, letting them vent, letting them express how they feel, being there and just being an understanding person to uh, for them to talk to, and then. Once they've, you know, expressed their feelings and how they feel about the situation, the SRO can start, you know, breaking down what the problem is and how to get, you know, get them through that problem. At what point then does the SRO have to arrest the child or take the child into custody somehow, whether whether it means taking taking them downtown, so to speak, or just or taking them out of the situation? What when does that happen? Um, that's there's a lot of variables to that. Okay. Um, generally, if it's a if it's a felony charge, they would. Uh, have to go to the youth center, um, but there's numerous instances where, I mean, if they're under the age of 18, they're getting, uh, they're just getting a referral. Uh, parents are notified, and they're not getting booked. They're not getting a citation or anything like that. So, a lot there's there's so many variables to that. Is it a, uh, you know, what kind of is there a victim? Is the victim in the school? Is it another student? Is it a society crime like? A, possession of marijuana, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of the issues that we've worked really hard on in the past uh, few years is if it's, uh, depending on what the situation is and what the, uh, the type of student, the child, uh, their behavior in the past, we, uh, we tend to let the school handle a lot more things right. uh, as far as discipline goes. Um, we want yeah, we want that to be handled that, at that level as much as possible. And real quickly then, is there one thing a parent can do to help you guys? Uh, communication is huge um, okay. because there's so many instances where we have, uh, we might have to talk to the parents about you know, whether it's threats, whether it's bullying, yeah. uh, things like that. Uh, communication, be open to us and contact the SROs if they have a concern because what happens outside the school comes into the school and vice versa. All right, Lieutenant, thanks very much for being here. Great, great advice. Thank you. Well, if you missed any part of the show, if you want to watch it again, it's available on the very local app. All KETV News Watch 7 reports are there on demand on, and they're free. You can get it wherever you download your apps. Well, that's all for this morning. Hope everyone has a wonderful and safe school year. I'm Rob McCartney. Thanks for watching. See you back here next Sunday morning for KETV News Watch 7's Chronicle.